Welcome to Electro Online. Now we're ready to what we've learned in the last 10 or 20 videos or so. We can finally apply that to some realistic looking circuits. So here we have a parallel branch circuit that has capacitors and inductors some resistors and we're trying to find the total impedance of that circuit. Now there's various ways in which we can do that. We can use the format where we write everything in terms of the real and imaginary parts and then add, subtract, multiply, divide these things or we can go ahead and convert into what we call the magnitude and the phase angle. So we're going to do this very same problem in two different ways. First we'll do it in terms of the real and imaginary parts and then we'll do it again using the amplitude or the magnitude and the phase angle and then you decide which you like better. Either way is good Either way, it really depends upon your preference or sometimes what your professor tells you to do. But let's do it that way first. So you can see here that we have an impedance right here and then we have two parallel branches. So we're going to find the impedance of this and then we're going to find the impedance of the parallel branches and then we're going to add the two together because after all, the two parallel branches are in series with this impedance right there. So the impedance across the first capacitor so the impedance can be written in terms of the resistance plus J times the reactance. In this case, it would be the capacitor reactance. So in this case, we have no resistance on this portion of the circuit. So in this case, that would be equal to zero. And the capacitor reactance, that would be minus J, minus J divided by omega times C. Mm. Now, of course, we need to be given an omega, which I forgot to put on the board. So let me take a look and see. I put the omega at 100 radians per second. All right, so omega is equal to 100 radians per second because without knowing the angular frequency, of course, we can't find the impedance. All right, so let's plug that in. So this is equal to 0 minus J divided by 100 times C. It's 2 millifarads, 0 0.002, and that would be 0.2 well, bring that to the numerator, so that would be equal to minus j times 5. That would be, oop, let me put a line like that. So that is the impedance across that first capacitor in terms of the real and imaginary parts. Of course, in this case, it's only an imaginary part because there's no resistance. Now we need to go ahead and add the resistances, or I should say the impedances, across the two parallel branches. Since there's only two branches, we can use the product over the sum. So this is equal to, let's call it Z1, Z2 over Z1 plus Z2. All right, so let's call Z1 the first one right here. So let's call this branch Z1. Let's call this branch Z2. So let's go ahead and express the impedance of those two branches. So Z1, that would be a real part. It has a 6 ohm resistor and then would be minus J times omega times C. Now notice uh, for, the, for the first branch here, for the Z1, we have the omega times C which is equal to 100 times C which is 0.001 that goes in the denominator so we write as 1 over that so we run over this that would be 1 over 0 0.1 1 over 0 0.1 which is equal to 10. So we see that the omega C of the first impedance is going to be 10 with the negative, that means minus J10. Times Z2, the impedance in the second branch, again we have a resistor which is equal to 10 ohms, that gives us the real part. And notice that in this case we have an inductor, that would be plus J, because in inductors of course the voltage leads the current, and so for Z2, we can say that omega times L is going to be 1,000, oh, not 1,000, but 100, 100 times 0 0.2, which is equal to 20. And so then we get plus J20. So here we have impedance 1 times impedance 2 divided by impedance 1 plus impedance 2. So we get 6 minus J10 plus... 10 plus J20. Now this is equal to, here we have to multiply these two together, so we multiply the two real parts together, it gives us 60, then we multiply the imaginary parts, this gives us minus J100 plus J120 
the plus is bigger, so that gives us plus j20. And then multiply the two imaginary parts together, it gives us minus j squared times 200. But j squared is a negative one that negates the negative. That becomes plus 200. And in the denominator, that's easy. We just simply add the real parts together, which is 16. Then add the imaginary parts together, which is plus j10. And then we can go ahead and simplify that. So this is equal to, in the numerator, we get 260 plus j20 divided by the denominator 16 plus j10. Now dividing complex numbers is a little bit more difficult. Here we have to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the complex conjugate of the denominator to get rid of the imaginary part in the denominator. So we multiply the numerator by 16 minus j10 and we do the same with the denominator 16 minus j10. And so in the numerator, again, we multiply the real parts together. So let me get a calculator for that. So we get 260 times 16 equals, that's 4160. 4160. Now the imaginary parts. So we have a plus 320 and a minus 2600. Let's see here. So we have uh, 2600, that's a negative, and we add plus 320 to that. So that would be plus 320. We get a minus 2280J. So minus J times 2280. That's when I multiply these two together and multiply those two together. So that's 2600 minus 320. Yep, that's correct. And now we multiply the two imaginary parts together, so it gives us minus j squared times 200. But again, the negative negate is negated by the, min by the j squared, so it gives us a plus 200. And the whole denominator, well, here we, again we have to multiply the real parts of this 256. Then we have a, um, well, the middle term disappears. And then finally, we get a minus j squared times 100. But again, the j squared is negative 1. That gives us plus 100 in the denominator. So simplifying that some more, adding these two together, that gives us 4360 for the real part, minus j times 2280 for the imaginary part, divided by 356. Now, we simplify that by dividing the denominator into the numerator. So we get 4360 divided by 356, that gives us 12.25. 12.25 for the real part, and then for the imaginary part it would be minus j times 2280 divided by 356. That gives us 6.40, 6.40. So this here is the impedance of the two branches combined that gives us z um, parallel right here. So that's now corresponding to this. Now what we need to do is to find the total z, z total, that is equal to, whoop, put a better equal sign in there, that's equal to the sum of these two, so that gives us z across the first capacitor plus the z from the parallel branches. That will be relatively easy to add. So this is equal to a minus J5. That would be the impedance of the capacitor. And we add to that the impedance of the branches, which is 12.25 minus J times 6.40. So this would be equal to 12.25 for the real part, minus J times 5 and 6. That would be 11.40. So after all, the total impedance is equal to, in terms of the real portion, 12.25 minus J times 11.40. And that's how you find the impedance of a circuit like that. Again, when you think about it, you take the impedance of the capacitor here, and then the two parallel branches are in series with this impedance right here. So first you have to find the impedance of the parallel branches using the product over the sum. Then once you find the the parallel impedance, then you simply add it to the impedance across the capacitor, and that gives you the total impedance of the circuit. That's how we do that.